Are you looking for an AI image generator that works locally and with AMD GPUs? Well, there are a couple of options, but if you don't want to go through the trouble of installing a web UI, doing some tweaks to make sure that it works on AMD, then you should try Amuse AI. Muse is a software developed by TensorStack in collaboration with AMD that allows you to generate AI images locally using stable diffusion models, which means that there are no subscriptions whatsoever since you would be generating images using your GPU or NPU. So in this case you don't need to use the command line or do any extra tweaks because the app will work out of the box with AMD hardware. It is very easy to install and it also has a feature that you might not find on others which is AMD XDNA and this will allow you to upscale images and improve the clarity by using an NPU, for example, Ryzen AI 300. Most of the time, you can use a Muse Easy Mode, which is a simplified version of the app. And in that case, when you click on generate an image, if you don't have any model installed already, then Amuse will install recommended models for each specific use case. In the case of images, it will be SDXL Turbo, but then if you use AI filters or design, it will suggest other models as well that you can install right away and start using. However, if you want more control over your image generation process and other stuff that you do within the app, then you should consider clicking on advanced and then go to model manager. And this is where you can select install and manage models that you want to use to generate images, edit and so on. There are different models that you can use. Some models will give you different results based on the type of images you are looking for. The ones that I would recommend are SDXL Turbo, Dream Shaper, and Realistic Vision. SDXL Turbo will give you general results for most types of images. Then you have Dream Shaper, which is best for illustrations and then realistic vision which can sometimes produce images that look like actual pictures. Then for each model you can see at the right what are the system requirements. So in this case for SDXL Turbo you have here memory 16 gigabytes and disk 11.2 gigabytes and this is the size that it will take to actually install the model on your machine. And here, if you take a look at Dream Shaper version 7 LCM, you can see that it uses up to 4.6 gigabytes of your memory and 4.2 gigabytes on your disk. So the requirements will vary and it will also affect how fast or slow you generate images. So a model that uses more resources, typically will generate images faster and sometimes better ones. And then down here you also have other models which are used for the design tab and other tabs as well. Once you select a model, you can click on the settings to change the GPU that you want to use, how you want to use your memory, so you can set it to the maximum or minimum to improve performance. You also have the advanced tab which will let you configure a bunch of stuff. I don't typically use this one. You can also uninstall the model or remove the model. And then if you go into settings in general, if you go to default model directory, this is where your models will be installed. So if you have two drives on your computer, then you can select the one that has more space to store the models. Now we are back on easy mode on the generate tab and let's generate some images. First we have this field right here which is the prompt and this is where you can write some text describing the image that you want to generate, the colors, a specific style or even specific image elements for more complex images. Then you have a slider right here which is the performance slider and this is where you can adjust how fast 
the image generation will be. So if you put it on fast, it will prioritize performance. If you leave it on balanced, it will be a balance between performance and quality. And of course, if you push the slider all the way to quality, it will prioritize the quality of the images generated instead of generating images faster. So if you want to compromise between the two, you can leave that in balanced. And that's usually how I generate my AI images. Then on image count, you can select how many images you want to generate. So the default is at four, but you can generate more or less images. Then here in aspect ratio, you can select an aspect ratio. So if you want square images, you can click on the square. If you want landscape images, or in portrait mode. Here, as you can see in the easy mode, they have predefined sizes in pixels, which you can see right here. And in a, the advanced mode, you can set specific resolutions. After generating your images, there's a couple of ways you can use them. You can actually upscale to use with higher resolutions, or you can adjust it using the design software of your choice. Also here we have AMD XDNA Super Resolution, which is an upscaling technique and it can also improve images. But as you can see, this toggle only works on AMD XDNA based NPUs. Then you have also two options here, which is create new variant each generation, or you also have real time stable diffusion. And I usually leave this at default. So let's use this prompt right here and generate images. Usually you need to wait a bit for the model to load and then image generation will be faster. I just went ahead and generated a couple of images here. And as you can see, it took around 10.3 seconds. And this is a pretty simple image. We just have the prompt astronaut in space. So let's change that a bit to see what we can get. So let's say monkey in Mars driving a cyber truck. Now let's generate. And as you can see now that the model is loaded after the first generation, this one is much faster, 11.6 seconds to generate for images. And here you have a monkey driving a motorcycle. Here it looks like a truck, another truck and another truck. It doesn't really know what cyber truck is. So it's just generated a truck is fairly easy to use and very fast if you have a decent AMD GPU and you are using XDXL Turbo or a larger model. After generating the images, you can select one image down here and then click on save image or click here to delete them. Now let's take a look at the AI filters tab. Here you can stylize and modify images using AI assistance. You can create some images like those popular AI animated profile pictures that people have been using on social. I have often seen a lot of these on Instagram, which give them a more artistic style to them. They actually capture the attention if someone is visiting your profiles. Here you have a prompt field. And in this case, there is a example, which is cyberpunk style. But here you can include colors, shapes that you want to include in the background, or even the whole background that you want on your image. So let's use one of my profile images as an example. To open the image you want to edit, you can click down here on load image or you can drag and drop a file. Let's just put one of my profile pictures right here. So let's crop and then click on done. So now let's say that we want to use the default prompt. Then we again have options for the image count. So let's keep it at four again. We also have again the aspect ratio and then we have presets right here, which will change your image. So we have a couple of options and you can take a look at them as well as their descriptions. So there's also artistic transform, realistic blend, realistic transform, sketch to drawing, sketch to image, color blend and color transform. Let's just use artistic blend. And now here we have a couple of options which include quality, image blend and AI assistant. But first let's generate some images by clicking generate images and let's keep the cyberpunk style. Let's click generate. As you can see, these are the results when you have a pretty high image blend. 
So let's actually turn this slider a bit down to see if we can get a better combination of the cyberpunk style we want and my profile image. So let's set it to 0 0.60 and let's see what results we get. Let's click generate images and as you can see now we are generating images that look a lot more like our subject and you can play around with both of these values, the image blend and the AI assistant to get different results. So let's load an image that already has a background and let's try this again. In this case it preserves the background color and then changes the subject of the image. Then if you want to you can again select an image and click on save or click here in the trash bin to delete all images. Now let's jump into the design section. So this is where you can create images with a sketch plus a prompt. This can be useful for creating conceptual art or concepts and you can use this sketch to point your image or prompt into a certain direction or for example define where the main elements of your image will be and then let the AI fill the rest, for example the background. We have a couple of options here, so we have sketch to image and as the image suggests this transforms a sketch or basic drawing into a rich detailed image and it works with stable diffusion and scribble AI assistant for realistic rendering. We then have color transform which creates an image with high detail based on basic colors and shapes and then we also have the AI assisted paint and you can use it to enhance or alter the appearance of a photo or image using stable diffusion. Again here we have the standard aspect ratio options and also the AMD XDNA super resolution. Now when it comes to the sketch we have also a couple of drawing tools and brushes right here and an eraser tool and we also have a couple of sliders here. So let's first start with an example and then we will talk about the sliders. So here we have flowing river winding through a canyon landscape. So let's draw the river. This sketch right here will guide the prompt. So let's click on generate image. Right here we have the final image just generated. You can also change the colors of the brush tools at the top, fill the background or load an image background. And to clear the drawing you can also click on this red button right here. If you use this overlay slider right at the top you can see the impact of your sketch in the final image. So let's keep sliding this and as you can see this will show you the image. In this case my form or sketch of the river itself didn't end up being used by the actual river but actually by what looks like a road right here so that's fine and of course the form of these mountains or the canyon was actually using my sketch here and here as well so that worked out nicely. So the overlay is the only slider that will show up here but now let's take a look at these ones at the bottom. So you have again quality, image blend and assisted strength. So again if you change the image blend and then click generate you will see that nothing is generated right here. So let's keep the image blend at 1 and that's probably what you will want to do most of the times if you are using the design or sketch function. And as you can see sometimes mistakes can happen and in this case we have our sketch here of what should be the river as two lines which were not supposed to be there but that can also happen as well. What I would say is keep using the sliders to get different images. So most of the times you will be well served with the easy mode but now let's go into advanced mode and let's check the image generation. So this might work better for more complex images or if you want to use a specific model. So here is model selector and this is where you click to select the model you want to use. So we have Dream Shaper, Realistic Vision, Dream Shaper and XD XL Turbo. So we have multiple options here to generate images or edit them. We have the text to image option which is the basic option to generate images using a prompt. Then we have image to image 
So you can generate similar images to the ones that you already have. So this could be quite useful if you are using AI images to split test stuff. For example, for advertising, you also have paint to image, image in painting, an upscaler, and the feature extractor. Then here we have a couple of options for the scheduler. You can enable live update, change here the dimensions or the size. We have then inference steps, guidance scale, scaled linear, and use keras sigmas. So most of these options I will end up never using, but you have those as reference. You also have system info right here to know how many resources the Amuse app is using. You have some advanced options right here, and then you have some automation options as well. So the paint to image looks very similarly to the design tab. You have the in image paint, which will let you select specific elements in an image, the app scaler to increase resolution of a smaller image that you have generated because images with a smaller size can generate faster. And that might be a way to improve your performance. If you have a slower graphics card, for example, you can generate an image in a lower resolution and then come here, select a model, which I don't have at the moment because I don't use the upscaler inside the Muse. And then you click on here to load an image and then you drag and drop an image right here and you can upscale. Amuse AI also has a video generation option. While I'm recording this video, I don't think there are a lot of models that can generate video and be run locally. But if that changes in the future, you can load up your models or you can import them to Amuse if you find them somewhere else. Click on here, load up your model. And then in this case, video to video will let you load a prompt here, an existing video to then generate another one. And we have other options, including an upscaler and the feature extractor. And here we have similar options to what we saw on image generation. For more videos about AI tools, make sure to check the playlist on the link down in the description. If you want to check out some recommendations for other marketing tools, you can also visit my deals page, which will also be linked down in the description with a bunch of tools that I've recommended to get more traffic or sales. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.